Well, where was it? Cortina. Darling? Cortina. <clears throat> Not that that matters, but that's where we were. When I was there before he arrived, and he used to have these, what the press used to call gorillas, uh, which were, of course, his henchmen, always following him about and uh, preparing places for him for when he arrived. And uh, Sinatra hadn't arrived at the, on this occasion, and the first thing the henchman did was to go to the jukebox but when they, where they found there wasn't a single Sinatra disc, as you call it now. So they took out 32 of the present discs in the, in the box and went upstairs and came down with 32 Sinatra records and put them in. <laughs> well, then you have to do that for him. When Carol Reed abandoned Mutiny on the Bounty, actor-turned-director Marlon Brando did it his way. Well, he wanted he a died. long death, yes. Yeah, he and he got it, didn't he? Yeah, it was it, very it? long. It took a long time to die, yes. <laughs> Lots of tomato ketchup, too. <laughs> Trevor Howard has known Robert Mitchum for over 30 years. They recently met in Cambridge, where Mitchum was filming War and Remembrance. David Lean's Ryan's Daughter was the last film they worked on together. They shared each other's company for 11 months. Mostly, we, uh, for long periods, we sit and, sat and stared into space. Mr. Lean would sit and uh, clench his jaw and stare off to sea. And uh, then in a burst of inspiration, we'd do the next shot, you know. Do you remember the time, though, when uh, Millsy and I were... The seventh wave came along and knocked us into the water, and uh, people came to rescue us because he lost, con he got concussion with John yeah. I forget what happened to me. I went underneath the, the canoe, or whatever they call them, Currex. Yeah. It fortunately pushed it off. But we rushed out onto the sand, and we had, oh, we, the, everything was, went, went for a burden then, because Lean was furious because we made a lot of mess on the sand, and he couldn't take another take because we ruined it. They'd have to rake up the sand again. And then he said, I can get more actors, but I can't do another shot. I've got the celluloids running. <coughs> That's true. Well, they had Both actors have grown to live with their reputations. Bob, how many, how many times have you been to prison? Can you remember? Because I keep going there, and it's all for the best purposes. It, you don't have to have done anything wrong to go to prison. You can be a good well, Samaritan. A lot of times I've gone, you know, just for a place to sleep. <laughs> a place to sleep, yes. They, oh, they were very kind to me, too. I well, always slept there. Going around the country, I'd just check in. they put you up if they had room. Uh, I went to a night spot in Montmartre called La Mer Catherine. That's up to the top of the hill in Sacre. And um, very nice evening, have we all had? Music, plush, even. And I was feeling good and asked for champagne for the violinists. I took a sign to them, uh, which they were very happy to have. And in the end, of course, I couldn't pay the bill. Theo Cowan, who you must know, you might must have Theo, hadn't given me any expenses. So I was marched off for a very pleasant evening in jail, because I said I'd, be, I'd, I'd, I'd pay them the next day when I got the money. Well, the money wasn't forthcoming until the next day, and uh, I thought, well, I'd better go back to the old joint. I enjoyed it. Uh, and, and paid my money, but I did have a very good evening in jail. I mean, they're very pleasant places, yeah. if you haven't really killed anybody. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've been to a lot of jails. I just wondered if you beat me. I can't count them. They're from pretty, pretty every, every country in the world. No, I can't. Oh, yes, you can, but you won't tell. I don't really remember. Yes, we've never found ourselves at the same one, have we? We've been in worse places, I'd say. Yes, indeed. You know, I think both of us have learned to try to make the best of it. Yes, we do, we do, we do. Oh, we do. Well, isn't that life? I mean, really, you've got to make you know, the best and, of life. And uh, involves, professionally yeah. and working, I think we both feel that if you can't enjoy it, if you're, if you're not having a pleasant time, it's really not worth doing it. Not worth doing it. Because you finish up, the man comes and takes the money, you know, and yeah. right well, we back should, where you started. We should so. do some more together, and then we, that, that, yeah, that means well. that we would enjoy it. Yeah, truly. Yeah. I mean, directing Trevor is, is absurd in yeah. a sense, because what can you teach the man? I mean, it's just lunatic. You stand there trembling a bit, because here's a man who knows everything, you think. Uh, and how do you ask him to do something? 
right? You can't, can no. you? And the magic about him is this, that if you go and say, well, I'm not quite happy about this, what he spots is what you really mean is, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Exactly. And he immediately says, well, the way I want to tackle this is very simple sporting. I think we'd have a go at it that way. And what he's doing in one sentence is teaching what you ought to have known in the first place without yes. letting you know that. Yeah. Also, if you talk to him, I mean, he'd be, he'd be the first to say, Stanislavski method, forget it. I don't know yeah. anything about that. But <laughs> watching him, no, but as an actor, I mean, like, that word action. I watched him, I mean, many times, and every time on that word, it was as if every energy source, physical, mental, everything, just was just centered. In a second, a mm. split second, action. And it's just and it like, looked, just mm. like the Stan Sefka, mm. the light so going on, and it just, yeah, so and but mm. it's just that. One of the stories <laughs> that we, you, you must never tell publicly was a wonderful afternoon that I spent with Trevor, because after all, yeah. and we used to go and have a few beers from time to time. And do you remember that business in the, in the um, colony rooms, <laughs> where we went and had a drink called 12, and all that. we went on after that. And we decided to go and see Helen, who was playing somewhere. And I sensed, in my dull, kind of drunken way, this was not the best thing to do. And we arrived in the theatre and kept trying to find the dressing room. And everything in me kept saying, for God's sake, find the pub, not the dressing room. And Trevor insisted, clutching the bottle, on finding the dressing room. And there was a magical moment, and he stood at the top of the stairs, and he said, I think we have to go down here, and stepped into space. And Christ, I'm talking about five years ago, he was 65 years old, and crashed one to the stairs the other, sat at the bottom and said, something wrong with this bloody escalator. He always was a great actor. If you look at Brief Encounter, and look at the last thing, what is it? He's always known the secret. He's always had it. What is it, then, Jack? Because what makes Trevor the great actor? Because what everyone says about him is he doesn't do a lot. Well, th this is the thing. It looks as if he doesn't do anything, and it's all there, exactly. isn't it? What exactly. makes it? His humanity, his love of life, his love of people, his warmth, his loyalty. Humour. Humour. Oh. You see, to anyone outside the business, it, this would all sound like bullshit, wouldn't it? Because absolutely, it's what everybody yeah, said, everybody's what? absolutely wonderful. You but you actually can't, can't say, say enough say, about you, you can't, you can't. The people say, I'm a very proud man. Well, mm. I'll tell you this, I'm proud to have Trevor Howard as a friend. Mm. I love him dearly, he is wonderful. It's been one of the joys of my life. I wish somebody would give him a knighthood or some title because of all the people that deserve to be honoured. He should be honoured for his contribution to the British cinema. I don't yeah. think he and wants it. I know he doesn't want it. <laughs> oh, but but think of the joy of turning it down. Of, yeah, <laughs> think of the joy for fun. all... The, no, but it, wrong, it, it would mean recognition <laughs> from some official source, wouldn't <laughs> it? Yes, it would. He <laughs> should have it. So yes, here's, he should. here's to our Sir Trevor. Famous as a film star, Trevor Howard is remembered by older friends as having been an equally great stage actor. Some lament he has not done more theatre. The first thing we did was the show, and we did it up at the Edinburgh Festival. Yes, the first, first. festival. Forty-seven. It was an enormous success, and it was adorable. And um, I was playing this ridiculous character called Hortensio, but um, I loved it. And Trevor, you know, was such a delight to work with. He was the definitive Petruchio. Absolutely. Do you remember? Absolutely. And you believe it too. Absolutely. Adorable performance. I mean, people. Uh, don't often don't realize unless I suppose they're over 50 or more what a marvelous stage actor he was because he was not only the best Petruchio I ever saw he was the best Leparkin in the cherry orchard I ever saw mm -hmm. and in the the recruiting officer by Farquhar yes. oh, oh, I forget that was it kite or plum I I, I can't remember mm -hmm. or the other um, but yes. but whichever it was he played it, it, it those three performances were absolutely mm -hmm. definitive mm -hmm. because he really had everything he had all the sort of virility of Lawrence Olivia and he had a sort of quality that Robert Donut had too which I can't quite Vulnerable. find. Vulnerable. Yeah that's absolutely oh. uh, because pathos Lived is, in yes. the, the, mm -hmm. the, the sense mm -hmm. of being yes. there. Absolutely. Sensitivity. And he also had this wonder, has always had this wonderful quality that when one see, saw him on stage or on film, the word acting never crossed your mind, did it? No, it was it. It, it was, was it. it, yes, it was. Yes. He was the And person. this was so in film, of course. No matter how mediocre the film was, what it, where, when he was there, you believed in mm. it. He's a desperately underrated actor, I think. Is he underrated? I mean, yes, I, I only say I that because... 
he seemed to me so universally admired, number one by oh, the public, universally and number adored. two, and number two by his peers. I mean, he's he, he is very much an actor's actor as well as a public Absolutely. actor, yes, isn't yes, he? Yes. Bernard Braden and Barbara Kelly have been close friends of the Howards for over forty years. The last time we met you was a couple of weeks ago in Soho, and you had a beard then. And I said, what are you having the beard for now? And you said, because I'm playing Lear on radio. <laughs> <laughs> Which made a kind of yes. crazy Canadian kind of sense. Well, yes. It's also a bit of the method school yeah, idea. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> of course, you get along so well with method actors. <laughs> <Yeah>. don't you? <laughs> but you see, I've always, and we've always loved and admired the one thing that I would love to have seen him play is the Wizard of Oz. Because this sums up to me everything about him. That volatility, that kindness, that cheekiness. And all my friends were tin men or lions. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. That's right. Or Judy Garland. That's right. That's Wouldn't right. you have made a wonderful Wizard of Oz? <laughs> Complete with cake, a dress rehearsal for Trevor's 70th yes. birthday. Yes, Tributes to devised by Bernard Braden, from some of those with whom Trevor has worked. Oh. Yeah, I got some of them here. Uh, this one's from Cary Grant. You did Father Goose with Cary Grant. I did. That's what? right. He says, uh, I hope I look that good when I'm Trevor's age. <laughs> How old is he now? I have no idea, do you? 18. <laughs> yes. There's another one from... Uh, That's funny. Richard Harris, <laughs> Mutiny and the Bounty. That's funny. Uh, it says, uh, Trevor, I love the man. I have no taste, but I love him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then we've got one from uh, Sinatra. You did Von Ryan's Express yes, with Sinatra. Yes, yes. It says, Trevor Howard, 70. Is that all? <laughs> Seems to have been around forever. And then we've got one from, who's this? Lord Olivier. Oh, no. Trevor has always been equally at home on stage or screen. If only he could remember where he lives. <laughs> uh, and then, here's the next one from uh, John Huston. John Huston. Trevor's phenomenal success as an actor over 40 years can be summed up in three words. He never improved. <laughs> Robert Mitchum for one believes he's learnt from Trevor Howard. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. Oh, he's coming up with something awful. No, 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 no. First of all, professionally, he is fearless. And which I've always felt is almost necessary. And uh, because he's done everything, he's not afraid of failing. He never has. I think basically for that reason. Really, you know, and just carries it off with, with I think the word is eclat, you know, and, uh, and, and, uh, and obviously enjoys it. And it's totally convincing. You never catch him acting, that's what I mean. Oh, oh, oh. I like that. Thanks very much. Please. Thank you, Bob. That's true. <laughs> you never catch him acting that way. That's the truth. <laughs>